Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, jambo. Bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are so happy that you're part of our beautiful Reading with Your Kids family. Please be sure to subscribe to the show at our website, readingwithyourkids.com, or on the iHeartRadio app, the Spotify app, wherever you find your podcast. We have a wonderful guest for you today. She is celebrating her debut picture book, Can You Save the Day? Our guest's name is Shannon Stalker. Before we invite Shannon in, I want to invite you to join us at the Orange County Children's Book Festival, the largest children's book fair in North America. We will be there at the Reading With Your Kids exhibit booth at the Orange County Children's Book Festival that's happening on October 6th in Custom Mesa, California. We're really, really excited. We're going to have a number of the guests on the show dropping by to the uh, Reading With Your Kids exhibit booth. Uh, we expect to welcome uh, Lisa Caprelli, the author of Unicorn Jazz, Marla Humor, uh, the author of the uh, Reading With Your Kids certified great read, The Circus Fish. Helena Bailey said she'll be dropping by. We also are going to be welcoming the author of Bellow the Cello, Dennis Matthew. It's all happening October 6th at, at the Orange County Children's Book Festival. Oh, did I mention that I will be performing two times? I'll be on the illustrative stage performing my magic show, talking about the magic of podcasting and involving lots and lots of, of kids and adults in my magic show. That's happening on the illustrative stage at, uh, at around 12.30 and the second show is around 2.30. You know how fairs are. They have a schedule and then there's like reality. So check it all out and absolutely be sure to drop by at the uh, Reading With Your Kids exhibit booth. We're going to be recording uh, a number of people, a number of interviews. You could be part of a future episode of the show. Check it out. It's the Orange County Children's Book Festival, the Reading With Your Kids exhibit tent on October 6th in Costa Mesa, California. Joining us right now from Louisville and Kentucky. She is uh, the author of many, many different pieces, but she's here to celebrate her debut picture book, Can You Save the Day? Please welcome to the show, Shannon Stalker. Shannon, how are you? I am great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really appreciative. I'm really happy that you're here. I can't wait to learn all about Can You Save the Day? Uh, it was a fun book to write, and I'm so excited to have a picture book on the shelves. So it's been a really exciting time. I love, I love that. I, I, when an author says, "I had so much fun writing this book," tell me, t- tell me first why it was so much fun, and then tell me what the book's all about. Well, I think, like so many other picture book authors or picture book writers, that it's something that has always been. A dream. It's something I've always wanted to do. Um, I've always been a writer of some sorts, but when I had children, I, that's actually when I fell in, picture, in love with picture books and really wanted to do this. And in 2015, I left my job to really give it, give it a, a, a real effort and, um, and also to be a full-time mom and be home with my children. And it was actually only the second manuscript that I wrote. Um, the first time it was nothing like it is now in the actual picture book form um, because it's a rhymer. So I had a lot of work that I needed to do to get it up to traditional publishing standards. But the idea actually came to me as I was falling asleep one night. Um, I just, it, my brain said, Instead of bark, the dog said burk, and I tried to shut it off because I was really, really tired, and my brain kept talking to me, so I rolled over and I tapped it in my phone, and as I did that, I thought, instead of quack, the duck said quack, and my eyes kind of popped open, and I thought, wait a minute, I love this, and I hopped out of bed, and my husband said, where are you going? I said, I think I'm going to go write a book. <laughs> so so I did, and I've uh, I've loved every iteration since then. Well, I love the fact that you you get up out of bed and you wrote because like, there's been so many ideas that have come to come to me at at that time and I didn't get up and I didn't write anything down. 
and, and they're they gone disappear. the next day. You think you'll remember, and you never do. <laughs> and a- actually, there there was one night where, when I I did answer the call of my muse and, and got up and uh, wrote a script for the first video that that uh, that I produced back in 1989. And it was again, it was just so lucky that I had gotten up and and answered that call. Funny how inspiration hits us at, at, at really weird times, you know, when we sit down intending to write and to come up with something, that inspiration, those ideas just aren't there. But it's when we kind of uh, are, are trying to shut down and, and not force an, an idea when they just come flooding in. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of the reasons so many of my critique partners and I, when when you get stuck, you just ha- you have to put that manuscript on a shelf for a little while because something eventually it will keep gnawing away at you until you think that's what this is missing. And and when it's ready, it will come. Now you mentioned, uh, you know, the various iterations of, of the book and, and, and how much you loved writing the book. Did you love the whole process of correcting and editing and updating and revising or was it just that one time when that, that burst of inspiration and the rest of the work was just kind of really tedious and, and hard? You know, I, I think I'm kind of a weird bird that way. I love <laughs> revising. I really love the process. When I have good feedback, when I have um, good critique partners or editors who know what's missing and they're able to tell me this is what's missing, it, then I, I – get a really solid idea in my mind and I'm able to go back and and revise and it's that it's that challenge that I I really enjoy um I think querying is harder for me querying the process of sitting down before I had an agent um querying agents and I sold this book on my own before I had my agent so that that process was work Mm -hmm. whereas writing the book itself was play so tell us uh, about the book and the reaction that folks are giving you f- after experiencing the book. Oh, it's been so fun. The book, in the book, we have the consonants and the vowels who get into a tiff because the consonants are bullying the vowels. And the setting is on a farm, and so it A gets upset first and leaves. And when A leaves, A leaves all the dialogue in the book as well. And the horse is kind of laughing because nay is, has no A and the horse can still make her sound. And then the E gets upset and the E laughs, the E leaves. And at one by one, A, E, I, and O leave. And as they do, the farm becomes more of a stuttering, stammering mess. Mm -hmm. And when only U is left, the tractor has fallen asleep. And B tries and it's heading straight toward the consonants and it's going to flatten them all because none of them see it because they're laughing so hard at all the vowels and uh, except for B and U. And B tries to jump into the tractor seat and honk the horn and save the day. And he's unable to because the tractor can't honk without an O. <laughs> so you has to figure out how to save the day and um keep everybody from getting flattened and bring all the vowels back. So it's, it's, there are themes of um, getting along and bullying um, on top of the vowel consonant. I hate to use the word lesson, but for, for lack of a better word, lesson that's in the book. Well, and, and a lot of people do kind of shy away from that word lesson, but you know, it's, it's a fact of life and, and it is, and, you're right. You know, great books, great songs, great movies, TV shows, they oftentimes have great lessons in them. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You, you don't want it to hit you upside the head as a lesson that's meant to be learned, but certainly subtle lessons, that's, that's what people so, so often are drawn to in these stories. And, and I, love, I, I love that you kind of you know, multitasking in, in the story because you, you're teaching kids about the, 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 the vowels and, 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 and you know, how important vowels and consonants are and, and how important it is to work together and the value of everyone and also talking about the issue of bullying. Yeah, it is. I like that a lot, too. It, it's, it, the book, everything about it was just so much fun because I felt I felt connected to it. It felt important to me. Um, 
I knew that it would be fun and it would have rereadability and it rhymes. And I'm a songwriter, so that meter and rhythm, um, the musicality to this book is something that's very special to me. So it's it's fun to watch children read it um, with the the meter kind of you know I guess singing along mm-hmm. and uh, to hear them even still stutter with the the vowels missing and uh, and get giggles out of those sounds as well. It's it's been really really great. I've actually just started to get a few pictures of kids holding the book because my launch was just this past Saturday and um, the books are, have not yet reached the people who first ordered them on Amazon. So it's still super new, but uh, every, every picture I've gotten with a child holding that book, I mean, oh, it just makes you feel so good. That's why we do it. That's right. I, 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 I we, Shannon and I were talking early about the fact that I do educational magic shows and one of the beautiful things about that and being in front of a live audience is you do something, you get that instant feedback, you know, immediately whether or not a trick wild the crowd or if a joke made them giggle or laugh. Uh, being an yeah. author is so different that, you know, that, that, you know, from the time you put the words on the page to the time that a child and a family experience those words, it, it can be a couple of years. And, of course, you're perhaps thousands or hundreds of miles away from that person. You may never hear those those cheers. It's wonderful that you're getting those pictures and uh, experiencing the joy that you're creating. Absolutely. I think that's one of the reasons that I'm so excited about author visits. You get a, a real sense of what's working and what's important to these kids. And you can tailor each presentation for future groups based on what works and even potentially get ideas about what you want to write in the future. Um, what what are kids thirsting for? Mm -hmm. And that, that immediate response that you get from them to those giggles. I mean, that's, it's priceless. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about is because when I go to your website, which is very, very cool, uh, oh, the first thing I see is your, your big, bright, smiling face, but then it says, meet Shannon, a fighter, a survivor. Those are the first two ways you describe yourself. Talk about being a fighter and a survivor and how that plays into you becoming an author of picture books. So I, I didn't plan to be a writer. I planned to be a physician. I wanted to be a pediatrician and I went to medical school and in my last year of medical school, I started having some unusual symptoms. And so I finished school, but I postponed quote unquote my residency to try and figure out what was wrong. And for seven years, I battled some very unusual symptoms and I was misdiagnosed with multiple sclerosis and spasmodic torticollis. And by 2005, I believe, I was either walking with a cane or I was in a wheelchair. Um, I had the right side of my body, particularly my arm, was covered in ulcers. I had physicians saying that my arm needed to be amputated. Um, nobody could really figure out what was wrong with me. Uh, some physicians thought because these ulcers wouldn't heal because they're what they called neuropathic, that infection was going to kill me. Mm. And uh, my husband was even told to put me into permanent care and get our affairs in order. And so um, in 2007, we left the country and I went to Mexico and I was put into a coma to reboot my system, kind of like you do a hard reboot of a computer. And I have, I, I was finally diagnosed at Mayo in Rochester with a disease called reflex sympathetic dystrophy. Um, which is an, a disorder of the autonomic nervous system. So it's sort of like the um, my body doesn't have the ability to regulate temperature when I'm in flare, for example, or raindrops would feel like uh, like scalpels. Mm. Um, so this very, very light touch is excruciatingly painful. And um, I, I'm writing my memoir. I'm, pretty close actually to being done with that. I'd say I'm probably four fifths done with that. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's been, I've been writing that now for 
two or three years. And every now and again, I have to kind of take a step back because if you're going to write a memoir, you have to go there. And um, because people will connect with you when you are being real and being vulnerable. And I want to be able to do that. And uh, so that's part of it. But with regard to picture books, it really hit me this past January when I went to an SCBWI conference in Miami and everybody's talking about own voices and the importance of diversity. And I thought, what do I know? Well, I, I know disability from the perspective of being in a wheelchair for a couple of years. I know I, what and now I'm in remission. So you wouldn't know it by looking at me. It's more of an invisible disease at this point. But I still have tumors and I still have to go back and. Um, into the hospital on occasion for boosters and things like that um, of ketamine, which is the drug that saved my life. Mm -hmm. But um, I thought I know that and I know music. And so I reached out to this wonderful, wonderful woman by the name of Evelyn Glennie, who is the first person to ever have made a full-time career as a solo percussionist. And she's won two Grammy Awards and she's been knighted by the Queen and she's deaf. And I thought, I need to write this woman's story. And it has since sold to Dial, um, Penguin Random House. And so that'll be my second picture book. And I've written another one now that we've sent back to our editor. But I really feel like that that's a direction. I love my fiction, and I'm going to keep writing fiction, and I'm going to keep write, rhyming, and I'm going to keep writing in prose. But the nonfiction picture book biographies about musicians – who have to overcome certain challenges, um, they strike a chord with me. Not to be punny, but, but they, they really do. Um, so it is a, very much a part of every single day of my life. I look at um, health issues every day that I'm healthy. I'm very grateful. I have a lot of gratitude for every moment mm -hmm. where I don't have pain. And I have a daughter who's had health issues for the last year, and it's really it's helped me talk to her and work her work work through issues with her because she doesn't feel quite so alone. Mm -hmm. So, some I'm writing picture books about sibling experiences when one sibling has health issues, and it just it guides me through through really everything that I write. What? Well, I you know, I, do, I don't mean to be corny by, you know, using the expression, you know, you, you, you're making lemonade, but I, I think that that's a real important thing to help our kids understand is, you know, that life, life throws us challenges and when mm -hmm. you can rise above it and, 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 and fight your way through it and survive it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. And, and I just love how grateful you are for the days when when you're healthy and for your family and for being able to write. Oh, definitely, definitely. I'm 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 grateful I can type now, you know. I'm grateful that um I can hold a guitar again and all these things that uh I might have otherwise taken for granted and I I don't now and that's that's a really beautiful thing and just to to think about different ways that I can put the lessons that I've learned into um into a book that might touch or influence a child, whether they're going through bullying, um, as so many children do. And uh, perhaps this can help, you know, them laugh a little bit mm -hmm. with Can You Save the Day or whether it's a child who is um, who is deaf, who wants to be a musician, to read about somebody who did overcome that obstacle and has succeeded because she's a phenomenal musician. She's just an extraordinary talent. Uh, or whether it's my memoir, you yeah. know, you just you never you never know when you're gonna when you're gonna hit a chord with somebody. Yeah, that's beautiful. I, I there's there's so many so, so many as I, as I'm looking back on my career and um, you're mentioning the, this deaf percussionist and I had this one experience and. In, in, Talk about going off road here. I, I, I apologize, but you just reminded me of this, this one experience when I was in rural Pennsylvania performing, and there was a, a, a deaf, deaf 
uh, girl in the audience, and she just had such a beautiful smile. And as we're waiting for everybody to come in, her and I, our, our eyes met as I'm greeting folks, and, and she just had this great smile. And the only thing I know how to say in American Sign Language is, you have a beautiful smile. Um, and what a, what a great thing to learn. <laughs> <laughs> but, it really is, and it's something that you remember. Yeah. I mean, you can probably picture that moment. Yeah, and, and it was. It was such a great moment, and and I'm I, my show is very interactive, and I have this great levitation illusion at the end of my show, and this young girl wanted, her name was Pam, she wanted so much to come up on stage, and I just, there's something inside me said, leave it to the end, let her do the grand finale, and so when I brought her up for this, the teachers and her aide, they just freaked out, and they're going, uh-uh, no, 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 she can't do this, and I go, no, she can, and and uh, so they finally relented, and they let this girl do this, and it was beautiful for her, but the thing that was so amazing was when she finished and she got off the, the you know, she, she came down, back down to the stage. When her friends went to applaud for her, no one clapped. They all gave the silent um, mm-hmm. applause with without anybody cueing them. It was just spontaneous. And it was beautiful. Oh, you're going to make me cry. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, I love that. But that's one of, you know, you're mentioning being, you know, having your music, having your books, having my magic touch kids. And it's, it really is a, a blessing. People come up to me and say, what a wonderful thing you did for that kid. And it's like, no, 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 no. This is, this is, this, this was a blessing for me. I am grateful that this has happened um, because it's really made my life better. If, if it helped the girl, awesome. I'm really happy for that. But I just feel so blessed to be able to be part of those moments. And that's what you're doing, too, with your books. Exactly. Exactly. You just you feel like it is such a blessing to be a part of the, the, these children's lives the mm-hmm. way that you are. It's, it's such a gift. Now, one of the things that you've been a part of is something a lot of folks have heard of, that which is um, Chicken Soup for the Soul. You've written yes. a couple of things for, the, for for that series? Yes, I have, and I absolutely love it. I love the series. I love Amy Newmark, their editor. She's fantastic. I've had a lot of fun with that. That's, and, and is there a particular edition that we should check out to find your work? There is a little piece of what happened when I was in a coma in the uh, in the dreams and the unexplainable edition. Um, I have a couple in a couple stories in the my crazy family edition, and I have one story in the um, oh what is it called? It's the the um, cat. Hang on, this is gonna make me crazy. Whoops, I just knocked a <laughs> knocked a box over. Because I have a book on it. Life Lessons from the Cat. That's what it's called. Life Lessons from the Cat. Awesome. So many things to for us to check out so we can get to know Shanna Stalker a little bit better. Well, one way we can get to know Shanna Stalker better and get to know her writing better is to go to your website. Tell us where we can go to connect with you, Shannon. Yes, you can go to shannonstalker.com, just www.shannonstalker.com. I have a blog on there as well. Because of everything that I've been through, instead of doing a picture book blog, I decided to do a blog called In Her View, where I interview female authors, uh, and I talk with them about three pivotal moments in their lives. So it's a completely different take on picture book blogs. And they're just some wonderful, wonderful authors that I have that I've met and that I've had the pleasure of talking to who have graced that blog. So um that's on there and uh you can get information about school visits on there and uh my critique services, things like that, and of course about uh can you save the day and upcoming books and, and news. That's awesome. We are so happy we've had a chance to to talk with you and to get to know you and to get to know Can You Save the Day, the debut picture book from our guest, Shannon Stalker. Shannon, thank you so much for being part of our show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really appreciative, and I hope that you reach out when your magic show comes to Louisville, Kentucky. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading with the Kids podcast. Our guests will be Gail Gritz, 
Gail is returning to the show to celebrate her wonderful Reba and Catherine, a brand new, a brand new chapter in that series called The Pony Cart. Be sure to check it out. Hey, talking about checking out, if you are the author of a great children's book, you may have, you, your mind may have exploded shortly after your book was published when you discovered that, um, you're now the marketing director for your book, right? A- am I right? You, you didn't expect that. When you sat down to write that beautiful, touching children's story, you didn't, you didn't, you weren't thinking about business. You just wanted to write something that, that touched a child, that, that brought a family together. Well, that's beautiful and, and that's worthwhile. But the fact of the matter is that if you're not out there marketing your book, n- n- there are no families going to be able to enjoy it. They're, they're not going to experience the beautiful story that, that you put together. It is. It really is up to you. We would love to help you help the world find out about your great book. We have a program. It's called the Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read Program. You might have heard early in the show I mentioned that Marla Humor's book, The Circus Fish, is a Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read. Now, we have a panel of evaluators there. They're parents, they're teachers, and kids. And if our panel believes that your book is worthy of four or five out of five stars, it becomes a certified great read. And with that status comes a whole lot of great tools to help you let the world know that your book is worthy of their consideration. Check it out today. Go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, and click on the Great Reads application button at the top of our newly designed website. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Shannon Stalker, be sure to check out Can You Save the Day? I also want to thank my producer, Fatima Khan. As I mentioned, our website is newly refurbished, and that was done mainly by our buddy Fatima. She does an amazing job. Also, check out her blog. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support that she gives me. I want to thank you. I want to thank you in advance if you are going to be out in Orange, California for dropping by the Orange County Children's Book Festival and saying hi to us at the uh, Reading With The Kids Exhibitor Group. I also mainly want to thank you for helping to make the world a better place. And you really do do that every time you read with your kids. I'll be looking for you the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.